What's going on guys, it's your boy Yoshikari GP, and today I'd like to introduce you to a new series called JoJo's Education System. This series aims to take an in-depth look at the educational practices presented in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Sounds boring? Well, maybe you're right, but I challenge you to stick around until the end of the video to see if I changed your mind or not. Okay, serious question, why am I making this video? Well, serious answer. You see, I'm not into education all that much. I believe it's extremely important to be educated and to at least be at a high school level where you can properly take care of yourself. I myself will be obtaining an associate's degree this fall, but that's it. I'm just not passionate enough to commit to higher learning. While doing boring exams and sluggishly writing essays, I thought to myself, what was school like for JoJo characters? Like an Italian man hitting a frog, the inspiration for this series went right through me. This was a great idea, especially since most of the main cast are seen inside or making reference to some sort of institute. With my heart resonated, I researched all educational practices seen and mentioned in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, as well as their real-world counterparts during that time. Today, we'll start with Part 1, Phantom Blood. Now before we begin, this video should not be taken as judgmental or offensive. I am merely discussing what characters say and do in Phantom Blood and comparing them to what was accurately occurring in the real world in which they were inspired by. Also, I will only examine traditional schooling practices and profession training, meaning Jonathan's tutelage under Zeppeli will be excluded as it is strictly martial arts training. With that out the way, let's begin. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1, Phantom Blood, takes place in England in the year 1880. It is a coming-of-age story revolving around two young boys, Jonathan Joestar and his adoptive brother, Dio Brando. After Dio's plan to take over the Joestar fortune fails, he rejects his humanity and embraces the power of the unknown by becoming an immortal vampire. Fueled with a sense of justice and unwavering courage, Jonathan Joestar battles his brother to the death in an attempt to stop him from taking over the world. Starting from the beginning, both Jonathan and Dio are born in 1868. In the real world, England and Wales both introduced the Foster's Education Act in 1870. This legislation would allow elected school board officials to create institutions offering free elementary education for children 5 through 13. The driving points behind this act was to separate education from religion and to combat fears that citizens are trading in an effective education for more industrial skills. Now the manga starts off with a 12 year old Dio Brando living with his dying father Dario in 1880 London. According to section 74 of the Foster's Education Act, school board officials were allowed to make school attendance mandatory. So was Dio skipping school? Well I wouldn't put it past him. However there are caveats to section 74. See you could be excluded from classes if you are sick living more than three miles from a school, or having already been certified as reaching a standard education. As stated earlier, Dio's father was sick, so maybe he could have made an appeal to stay home and tend to him, since they were both very poor. There is the possibility that Dio was just living too far from a school, but I think the most likely answer is that he already qualified the standard education requirements. Most of the scenes displaying Dio prior to his departure shows him reading a book or gambling in the anime adaptation, considering that I don't believe he does much else with his life at this point. After Dario passes away, Dio moves to England to live with his adopted family, George Joestar and his 12 year old son, Jonathan. Unlike Dio, Jonathan was born and raised into a noble family. Nobles often had their children stay at home and learn from top notch tutors until they could enter a prestige university. If nobles were to send their children to school earlier, they would still receive a high class education. However, the issue of bullying was a consistent factor that parents will have to consider. As shown in a later scene, Jonathan reveals that his ancestors have also lived in the Joestar mansion. This means that George Joestar received the same type of education as his son growing up. Now 
Once Dio has settled down with his new family, he receives homeschooling alongside his brother Jonathan. Whereas Dio excels in his education, Jonathan struggles to keep up. As a result, Jonathan was often scolded by his father and physically reprimanded. These acts of punishment were even utilized by school instructors up until the late 20th century. Prior to the boxing match between Jonathan and Dio, the narrator explains how important sports are to schools in British society. It even goes as far as putting sports above academics and religion. While many public schools and universities would use these activities to better relationships with one another, I couldn't find anything major that made academics seem less of a priority. During the Victorian era, sports gained a huge amount of popularity, so I understand why many people were excited about its potential. Fast forward seven years later to 1888, Jonathan and Dio, now both 20, are participating in a rugby match at their school, Hudson Academy. This seems to be their first place of study outside of their home. It would also line up with what I previously mentioned about nobles being homeschooled up until university. Students in Britain who attend school full-time usually graduate with their degrees at a minimum of three years. Jonathan is graduating with a degree in archaeology, while Dio receives his degree in law. It should be noted that lawyers are divided in two groups in England. You have a solicitor, someone who deals with all forms of legal matter, like reviewing contracts and giving advice. Then you have a barista, someone that specializes in representing clients in court. Solicitors and baristas work hand in hand as solicitors often do the research for the baristas to present and use in court. We don't know what type of lawyer Dio became, but we can assume he would have made tons of money in any occupation. During this time, George has become incredibly ill, making Jonathan regret his decision of becoming an archaeologist and wishing to have studied medicine instead. Even Dio said he would have not made much money with his profession. However, the intricate aura emitting from the stone mass was more important to Jonathan than financial wealth. Research with the stone mass was going well, as we can see his journal is halfway filled with pages of his observations and experiments. While studying the stone mask, Jonathan finds out that Dio is the one responsible for killing Dario Brando and making his father ill. Jonathan snatches the medicine Dio has been given to his father and threatens to have it analyzed. Dio becomes worried but slowly gains composure when he claims that western medicine would have trouble analyzing eastern medicine. This got me curious as to how medically advanced England was in the 1800s. What I found was articles claiming that Victorian medicine would seem atrocious by today's standards. Which seems fitting as we could say the same thing for everywhere else. However, just like sports, technological developments and medical practices will bloom during this period, resulting in common uses such as the x-ray and anesthesia. As far as western medicine, they are typically known for using natural remedies to cure ailments. The effects are said to take longer than Western medicine, but with the added bonus of fixing future problems within your body. Moving along, we are introduced to the character of Robert E.O. Speedwagon. Speedwagon is a 25-year-old gang leader born and raised in London just like Dio. Since the Foster's Education Act was introduced in 1870, Speedwagon would have been 7 years old when elementary education became mandatory and free. He may have even graduated high school, but given his position as a gang leader, it's likely that he dropped out at some point. Speedwagon also traveled around the world, but I'm not sure for what purpose. Now someone I have not made mention of yet is Irina Pendleton. In her first introduction, she was an 11 year old girl born in England. I'm not sure if she was a noble as well, so I'm going to treat her like an ordinary girl. Female characters in this age were given general education, but were also taught how to sew, draw, and play at least one instrument. These skills made them seem more desirable in the eyes of men looking for wives. Jumping seven years later, Irina is now a nurse working in her father's hospital. She is taking care of Jonathan after his first battle with the vampiric Dio. This is where we discover that she had been living in India for seven years due to her father's work as a doctor. 
She is probably the only main character in the series who has both Eastern and Western medical knowledge. I do wish we could have seen more of her skills in the series. The last mention of schooling in Phantom Blood comes from Sendo instructor William Antonio Zeppeli. While Jonathan is learning about Hamon, Zeppeli-san explains to him about his past with the stone mask. He states that when he was a young Will A. Zeppeli, he was born in a scholar family. Now Zeppeli-san was born in Italy in 1838. Around this time, educational institutes had always been available to the wealthy class. It wasn't until 1859 when Italian elementary education became free to all children. Zeppeli continues by saying that he joined his father's university group to travel around the world and study archaeology. It should be no surprise that archaeology and Italy go hand to hand. The country is famous for having ancient landmarks and artifacts. I definitely want to visit the Colosseum. For non-Jojo reasons, of course. <clears throat> Zeppeli-san and his team would eventually travel to Mexico, where they would excavate an underground Aztec temple. Inside, they extracted the catalyst that would start the entire series. Alright, just a quick recap. Jonathan Joestar became an archaeologist. Dio Brando became a lawyer. We're not sure if Speedwagon graduated high school, but we do know he traveled around the world, so he saw plenty of things. Arena Pendleton became a nurse. And William Antonio Zeppeli became, well, you could say he became an uh, archaeologist. Probably not officially, but yeah, that's what he did. And that's what he, that was the last official occupation he had before he became a breathing instructor. Huh, maybe he does yoga. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you learned something new about your favorite JoJo characters and the different education systems being taught around the world. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. Also, let me know in the comments if I was able to change your mind regarding the theme of this video. If there was anything I missed or forgot to cover, let me know that as well. Until next time, ciao.